Yo, 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 welcome to Physics, 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 Hi, I'm Vinay and I'm back for episode number 5 of From the Prediction series. So this question is about a rising dust particle. Let's read the question first. Consider a spherical dust particle resting on the ground. There is an air flow across the dust as shown in the figure. So here I have the dust particle and there is some air flowing across the dust particle. In addition to the buoyant force, the dust particle experiences a lift force in the vertical direction due to the change in the direction of momentum of air flow around the dust. So, the question is saying that the air is not only applying a buoyant force but also something that is called the lift force because of the momentum change. The momentum was initially directed upwards at an angle and now it's directed downwards. So, there is some momentum change. And because of that, uh, there is a lift force in the vertical direction. It can be assumed that the lift force depends only on the size of the dust, density of air and the speed of the air flow. So, size of the dust would mean the radius of the dust, density of the air and the speed of the air flow. So, the speed of the air flow can be assumed to be constant across the dust particle due to negligible velocity. So, there is no change in the speed. So, there are three quantities that the lift force depends on. So, what is the question asking? For a dust particle of density 10 times that of air, the minimum speed of air flow to lift the dust particle is V1. Similarly, the corresponding speed is V2 for a dust particle of the same radius but having 5 times the density of air. And we want to compute the ratio of V1 to V2. So, in this question, you might at first get a little confused on how to approach the lift force calculation. A common approach would be to try and apply Bernoulli's equation, but it's very unclear on exactly how we will apply Bernoulli's equation and between which two points we remember we apply Bernoulli's along a streamline. So, this question is actually uh, an example of a very powerful usage of dimensional analysis. The lift force depends on the three quantities given in the question that should strike a bell in your mind that perhaps this question is related to dimensional analysis. Perhaps we can write an expression for the lift force using dimensional analysis. Let's have a look. The lift force, as the question says, depends on the density of air, the size which is the radius of the dust particle and the velocity or the speed of the air flow. Now, I can do a dimensional analysis and I can find the dependence of the force on these quantities, but before that, if you've encountered the thrust force in this example in fluids chapter, like suppose you have a hole and there is some speed of fluid coming out, the thrust force comes out to be rho a v squared. So, if you come across this, then you can simply use this expression as far as dimensions of the force is concerned. And I can simply say that the force of dimension is equal to the dimension of density area times dimension of v ka squared. Now, this will be the best method to do it if it strikes you or you can just do it by basics by actually writing down the dimension of each quantity in terms of the standard in terms of the fundamental quantities. So, that is what I have done here. I have expressed force in terms of a unitless quantity c, density of air raised to alpha, radius raised to beta and speed raised to gamma and the square brackets uh, denote the dimension. So, there is no mention of C because it is unitless. And then I have simply expressed all the quantities in terms of the fundamental quantities. Force would be M1 L1 T minus 2 this is a very standard expression you should all know about it. Density of uh, air would be mass divided by volume. So, M1 L raised to minus 3 radius would be L speed would be length by time. So, L1 T minus 1 and then you just compare the powers for each quantity. Uh, you should be able to very easily see that M raised to 1 uh, on the left hand side will correspond to m raised to alpha. So, alpha is equal to 1. Similarly, for time, t raised to minus gamma will correspond to t raised to minus 2, gamma is 2. And then do the same thing for the length and you solve for beta and you get the value as 2. So, this is my final expression for the lift force, which is what we expected from if you use the thrust formula. Rho a v squared, where a is uh, area, here it will correspond to r squared, exactly what we get here. So, just a small animation once more to demonstrate the lift force. Here, the air momentum is changing in this direction. You can see that 
the downward direction is the final momentum of air the upward at an angle is the initial momentum of air you can you can see that the change in momentum is in the downward direction for air so that means the force on the dust particle will be in the upward direction the vertical vertically upward direction assuming that there is no change in speed which was given in the question all right so now let's look at the fbd of the dust particle so i have the usual gravity for the dust particle i have the buoyant force by air and in addition to those two i have the lift force which i just calculated and this is the force equation to just lift the dust particle we are going to assume zero acceleration and just substitute the lift force that we calculated on the previous slide the buoyant force is simply uh, density of air times the volume times g and mass into g would be density of the dust particle times volume into g and this uh, this expression is what you get for the speed of the airflow to lift the dust particle now what is a crucial factor here is the one in the bracket density of the dust particle divided by density of air minus 1 everything else is same for both the cases in the question remember the question had a dust particle of density 10 times that of air and the second case was a dust particle of the same radius but density is 5 times that of air and now it's just a case of substituting the respective densities in the first case it's 10 times and this ratio is 10 second case this ratio is 5 and let's take the ratio of the speeds and you'll get the answer as 1.5 so this question is a very useful example in how powerful dimensional analysis is when you are analyzing some phenomena about which the physics is relatively unknown so hope you've enjoyed this question that's it for today see you guys good night